Guys, let's talk a little welterweight, right? They're on display. Just came out of Madison Square Garden. Just had the two best welterweights in the world. Two of the best welterweights of all time. We just had this fight with Colby and Kamara. What do we do? We thought Shemaev was getting hot and bothered. Ready for it. And then Dana comes out and gives us clarity and says, no. No, I wouldn't stick him in there. Not even being in the top 10 against the greatest fighter in the world today. Okay, great. well, there's our answer. So now we can move on. Where's Blahal Muhammad sit? And not Blahal to go in and fight Usman next, but Hall to either fight Edwards or to fight Chemaev. I got to bring Blahal into it because he's such a willing participant. Blahal just got assigned Wonderboy. Okay. Blahal's out. Wonderboy's out. Not to mention, Wonderboy's not the world's worst option. I get that his last fight didn't go his way, but he is the only guy within the top five who has yet to fight Kamar Usman. It was Wonderboy's biggest claim, but it's a very fair one. I see. See it Wonderboy's way on that? I mean, I put a little check in the Wonderboy column. No, great. They're going to fight off the board. Jemayev's going to do something. We're told it's a rumor of Nate Diaz. I don't know how much I buy that. I don't know how many guys have the courage to even fight Jemayev. I think you've got to turn to, like, the Gilbert Burns of the world. Gilbert Burns will fight anybody. But I think you're going to need somebody like that. I think that Neil Magny can't be ignored. Consider Magny has asked for the job, at one point had it. This is when nobody else would take it, and it's when nobody even wanted it. Chemayev is now a well-known name. At the time that Magny was offered Chemayev, he was not a well-known name. He was ever bit as good as he is now, but people didn't know who he was. It was a complete loss for Magny, and he offered to do it back then. Now that it would help Magny a little bit, I think that'd be wildly unfair if we don't consider Magny. And then you got Nick Diaz, who has always been a wild card who we all love and want to see, and who, in all fairness, against a former world champion and Robbie Lawler, looked damn good. He really did. I don't think he knew that at that time. My guess is that Nick has gone back and watched that fight, and Nick is probably even proud of him. Go, man, I was right in there, wasn't I? Yeah, you were, Nick. You were right in there. Taking shots, giving shots, everything, right? And not to mention the rust that he showed. And he did look rusty. He had almost no head movement, but never got hit in the head. He rolled. He did what we call roll with the punches. His feet were planted. But he still had mobility. Nick looked good while looking rusty. What's Nick going to do? Nick also doesn't qualify to go take on one of those top 10 guys in the world. But you have something, you got to have a special opponent, and Nick is willing. Been wanting Nick to fight every year that he didn't want to fight. Now all of a sudden, Nick's here and wants to fight. We got to get him one, don't we? Isn't that kind of our job? Wouldn't that be silly? The guy that we've wanted for five years is finally back, and now he wants to do it. He's licensed. He's in shape. He's in complaint. we got to get him a fight. Who's it going to be? And Nick offered himself. Nick offered himself to fight Leon. Chemayev pulled out. Lahal Muhammad stepped up. And Nick Diaz, Nick Diaz, I believe it was on Twitter, tweeted it right out, right to Sean Shelby or right to some kind of a decision maker, put me in. Now, In a normal scenario, would Nick Diaz qualify to fight the number three guy in the world who hasn't lost in five years? No. No, in fairness, coming off a loss doesn't mean you now get number three, but it's Nick. And I, while I don't predict for you, and I do not believe that fight can and or will be attempted to be made, let's just walk down that path a little bit because it would make for one of the great stories in MMA. Big Brother coming in to get redemption on Little Brother is one of the most barbaric, natural responses that any family would ever be able to relate to. Everybody is going to understand that. Before we get to have that fun of telling that story and what all would be on the line, we have to reasonably believe can we get them together. Nick offered to do it. Now, Leon wants to go fight Usman, but there's no promise that he's going to do that, and that would be a massive opportunity for Leon. Massive. I would think Leon would want to do it, but Leon didn't speak up. He didn't reply back. So Leon either is no dead set, and he thinks he's got an opportunity to get Kamara, which I think is fair. I think that might be exactly what happens. Or he doesn't think that that fight could actually get made. He doesn't think that Dana would be interested in sign off on that fight. And I think that he'd be right to consider that. That would need some work. This is me teeing you guys up. You're the ones that are going to do the work. Do you accept the fight or not? Would you accept Nick, who's coming off a loss, not ranked in the top 10, to go in there against 
the perennial number one contender. Would you accept that? Probably not. I'm asking you. I want to hear your responses, but probably not. Nick's probably going to need something else to do. And I don't have any other ideas for Leon. I mean, I really don't. A lot of it's going to come down to Usman. But a lot of it's already come down on Usman's side, which is just the calendar. When can Usman be back in there? When does he want to be back in there? Are we looking at May or June of next year? A normal time frame? Yeah, it sounds like it. Usman did some interviews. He's not talking about any injuries or ailments. He's not saying, I need a break and all these other things that guys like to say. He didn't say a damn thing. He said, you guys sort it out and I'll be on the other side. Perfect, champ. Perfect answer for a champ. Good leadership sales, champ. But who is that? Who is going to come out the other side? If we held Leon out as long as we did, and we did it with the caveat that this is your final one, it's against the former number one contender, and he's the second most famous guy in the entire sport, Leon bit for it. That's now gone. Can you even present something else to Leon, right? Like at, at some level, there is a part of ridiculousness where you don't go make those offers. You, you two. Are we to that point? I'm asking the question. I know that we're very close. I do know that we're very close. And I think the fact that Masvidal and Leon both came off the card is our biggest clue. Historically, when that happens, just use TJ and Sandhagen as the most recent example, they get matched just at a later date. And that is not, according to Leon, what's going to happen. So who does that leave for Leon? I would assume Usman. But that doesn't mean I'm right, right? <laughs> doesn't mean I'm right. I got limited information. And if we're just putting our heads together, if we're just, if we're just friends having a conversation, tell me. Leave me a comment. I want to know, and I'm going to report back. I'm going to come back and tell you what the comments say. Well, let's just do a little poll on our own. Go right below. Leave me a name. I'll tally them up. I'll come back. We'll have part two.